All right, welcome everybody to our RUAC show and tell for our RUAC spoon template challenge number 40. This one is a Welsh love spoon and the template was kindly provided to us by Kate, good old Kate, who also happens to be a phenomenal guitar player and singer, by the way. Um, so yeah, it was my privilege to get to play and sing with Kate out at uh, Pat's Spoon Gathering, Klipnaki Woods, uh, in Western New York back in uh, July. And uh, we, had a, we had a blast, it was a good time. So Kate, with that, I'm going to spotlight you. And if you could just tell us a little bit about how you came up with this challenge template and uh, what inspired you to, to go for the Welsh Love Spoon route. And uh, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you, Chuck. So yeah, this uh, Love Spoon situation was inspired because when I first saw Love Spoons, when I first started carving, I was like, well, those are a little too crazy. Not my style. Don't really like them. Those crazy Victorians are always so dramatic. And then I was like, well, I should probably, you know, lean into that. You know, I should it's part of spoon carving history so and and tradition so i should probably at least learn something before i snap judge and um so i started doing some research and then um i found out that i live kind of close to david western who was um doing a lot of the research for the last 20 years um and writing books about them and carving them so i spoke with him and i saw some of his spoons and um yeah I was like okay well yeah this, this is still a really great challenge and I've been carving spoons for a number of years but I felt like I still hadn't tried to carve like through my spoon and really fancy decorations and the handles and I was like mm. yeah that's a challenge so yeah. So like, let's do it it's going to be hard it's not a beginner's challenge but I feel like at least we could learn something and um I feel like especially with spoon carving it's one of those things that you don't really know if you like doing it until you start trying mm -hmm. um you know like do I like chip carving I don't know let's try it do I like coal rosing I don't know let's try it and I was like do I like, you know, doing, doing this kind of style of, you know, of spoon? Let's try it. I don't know. We'll see. So I've learned a lot um, about them. They take longer than I think a three week time mm. would allow. Um, and I think one of the big things I, I took away was that it's fun to make you know the quick eating spoons that we hit that we make or like a cooker or whatever but I think it would be kind of fun to just have a super highly decorated spoon on the side just over the months you know like pick it up here and there because some of these decorations are easier to, easier to carve when it's dry mm. um, so anyway so David um, had a really great, a really great um, talk with us on online the other day. And I thought one of the great distinctions that he made was the difference between the Welsh love spoon and then just the European romantic spoon carving tradition. Um, so that includes like all the other, you know, Sweden, Norway, um, uh, the Breton region, all those, um, the Welsh love spoons had a very specific, uh, part of that culture. And then, but there was still like a romantic spoon carving tradition where people were making highly decorative spoons from the 1600s to the 1900s, basically through the 1900s, um, until, of course, the Industrial Revolution, mm. um, which like ended everything, <laughs> began everything and ended everything up. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, so, and then um, he, so he just kind of was, he, he made a really great point that, um, you know, not all the spoons that were highly decorated in Europe between those in that time period of 350 years were like love spoons, but they were romantic. Some of them were carved from a dad to a daughter or, you know, anyway, he goes in, in the video, mm. and it's a really good, um, good talk. So, um, and I thought, I think it's really interesting to think about people decorating the things they use all the time, you know, and even like the stays that women had in their um, clothing, there were these wooden sticks that they had to keep their, their shirt, their dresses stiff. Mm. Um, you know, there was a tradition of decorating those and like, no, you know, only they saw those. So, and then like traditions of decorating like butter paddle and um you know creaming ladles and all these just kind of like traditions of decorating the things we had they had and and it was kind of like you know let's get fancy <laughs> um, yeah. so anyway that's what I thought we should do is trying to get fancy and and you know hopefully we can keep carving one or two here and there and it will be uh, part of our you know part of our um pocket of knowledge right. it's interesting because they're like my i suspect that a lot of us come into spoon carving especially you know the greenwood spoon carving you know tradition um as being probably more minimalist in approach uh more more simple uh design aspects except for certain among us like Oren who get very creative and fancy with their carved snails and uh you know really cool stuff like that which is which is a lot of fun but I have to admit that I too have always kind of I mean I've known about Welsh love spoons and and the whole you know love spoon slash romantic you know spoon sort of thing and these highly decorative things and maybe it's a reaction like my mother was very much into like you know victorian design victorian style homes and all of that and i kind of always recoiled from all the highly decorative i, I you know I'm, I'm much more i guess you know uh my, my own sensibilities are formed more probably by like a shaker you know approach to thing very minimalist or or japanese very minimalist and just let the natural beauty of whatever the wood is come out um but yeah. I can certainly see where it, these highly decorative elements really push people's design skills, their execution skills, their carving skills to, to really push it to, to take something to another level. Um, almost, you know, almost like a like a like a journeyman, you know, does something highly decorative as their masterpiece, you know, when, you know, back in the days of guild work and all of that to become, you know, known as a master. You do something highly skilled and highly decorative in many cases to show off those skills. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, I just, I've always kind of recoiled, you know, a bit from it. So I'm really glad that you did push this uh, idea forward. Um, and so hopefully uh, people had a lot of fun with it. And from some of the photos I've seen, it looks like people really have done some really cool stuff. So yeah, that, and I wanted to give the opportunity to try, you know, carving different meaning into our spoons. Too, yeah. Because, I mean, we don't might not necessarily relate to some of the old symbols, like, mm -hmm. um, but some of those are universal. And then like some of the symbols we can, you know, we can come up with that have meaning for us and i i think it's like a great opportunity to like carve meaning into our spoons not that we yeah. don't we do that anyway but you know like just really intentionally and stuff so yeah they're always carved with love yeah they are <laughs> that's the thing i mean i think my first spoon was kind of a love spoon because the first spoon i ever carved was a gift for my friend mm -hmm. and um it was a cooking spoon because she loves cooking and it was for her birthday and um there's no you know it's has no decoration 
but I definitely yeah. felt so much love when I carved it for her. And um, so I think there is some love in all of our spoons. There is absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, because trying to strike that balance, but like most of the examples that I had seen you know, over time of, of Welsh love spoons or, or, you know, other tradition romantic spoons, some of them are so highly decorative and so highly ornate that they've lost the functional side of it. And again, I think most of us coming into spoon carving green, we're, we tend to be very focused on the, you know, how does it function? How does it work as a spoon? Yes, we can try creativity with forms, but if it doesn't function well as a spoon that I can sit and eat with uh, and clean easily, um, then, you know, for most of us, then it's not a good, good quote unquote spoon. Right. Um, and so the the whole highly decorative Welsh love spoon and all that, some of the forms get and the handles get so huge to give them a broader palette, a bigger palette on which to to add the decorative elements that they in in many cases, I feel like they they lose their functionality. And, mm -hmm. and so I guess for a lot of us who still want to retain that aspect of our spoon carving, trying to find a good, uh, medium between the two aspects as, as, as an expression of love and an art piece almost more than anything else versus a purely functional spoon, trying to find each person's comfort level within that, I think is, is an interesting challenge. Yeah. So. And that's kind of why I had like a smaller one and mm. like a kind of bigger one so that like the smaller yep. one could potentially just be like an eating spoon. And then the bigger one, you know, like, who knows, like, God forbid we put a spoon on our wall, but, like, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe someone yeah. wants to make a really cool decoration, so. Well, I have lots of spoons on my wall, but they're in such a state that they can easily be taken off to be used. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, same here. <laughs> awesome. Well, do you want to show some examples of, of what you've worked on? Yeah, so I... um I did start, I have this one, but it's not really done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still working on this part. Uh, what what yeah. more will you do to it? I think just refine it because it's okay. still kind of chippy and like rough a little bit. Okay. Um, but it's, um, it could put, you know, I can eat, I could eat with it. Yeah. Um, this is the one that I kind of laid out in the template but mm -hmm. also, you know, encouraging people to make their own designs. And then this is the crazy Instagram one that I <laughs> <laughs> carved for the, for the first one. So it was supposed to be kind of funny. I kind of, you can't see it in this light, but I painted inside. Oh, nice. Um, some of the holes. Yeah, just uh, to help it set off a little more. Yeah just to see um and then yeah I, I so those were the two from the template that I got done I have another one of these in progress which is downstairs and I didn't finish yet but um and then this was a, not the template I actually started this <laughs> for the template um and it's supposed to be a love spoon of when you check in with your friends and you text nice. and it, it kind of was <laughs> Like this was supposed to be a heart, but it kind of went crazy. Like <laughs> so, I had to make it into a, a square. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like to me that's a loving moment where you're like, "Hey, are you doing okay?" Like, "Yeah, I'm okay." Like, so a tale um, of modern love. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of the take. Yeah. I don't know. I have a bunch of ideas floating around in my head, but, um. Mm. Very creative. Yeah, so I think it's brilliant. I love it. Were, yeah. So these were a couple, these were the ones I got um, kind of pretty much done. This one had a bark inclusion yep. um, on the back. It's an apple. So apple's yeah. always seen that, but I, you know, it's just there. It's a crack, but Very it's nice. not a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was cool. thinking about some of the older you know, the people making their love spoons and they were probably like, oh, I have to pick like a really good wood and, you know, yeah, yeah. really nice straight grain. And just funny to think about. We still think about that all these years later. Indeed. 
All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. Uh, this, I think, has been a really cool challenge. Let's see what some other people have done. So I'm going to take the spotlight off you and go back out to the gallery view. And as always, uh, wave a hand if you would like to show your spoon. So who would like to go first? Oren, did you have anything you wanted to show? Sadly, no. <laughs> oh, no I worries. I apologize, but I got to yep. go. That's right. OK, no worries. Cheers, mate. All right. Who would like to go first? Wave a hand. Don't be shy. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start naming people and calling you out. All right, Kaylin. Kaylin the Brave. It doesn't look like anyone's in a rush. Usually I wait till the end because I'm on the West Coast, but um, uh, well, uh, so you wait till the end because you're usually still finishing your spoon. We know. That Come is on. actually 100%. I was just working and finished mine right now. <laughs> That's I, not a lie. I, I don't think I've, I have been ready at a reveal before, but it's not the common thing. Um, so Welsh Love Spoons, similar to your experience, I've always been a little intimidated by them. And then also some of the symbology, I like stand back a little bit um, from some of the older, more traditional symbology. But it was very sweet because my boyfriend's mother sent us one that her mom had bought in Wales on um, a family trip. And so this one, it's like, 1960s Wales so you can see the band saw marks around it's not hand carved but it's still quite cool and then she has a really old printout about each of the shapes and what they meant during that time in Wales when this company was doing the production but there's also a neat little um, image of some of like how intricate they could be and used as like wall decoration for folk art so we have a, a little love spoon here in the house that hangs in the kitchen which is kind of fun so the history is neat and i i need to get over the functionality piece of it because when i make spoons mm -hmm. i want them in people's hands i love right. to cook and so that's like i'm midwestern either i get to feed people or in like isolation from covid for years i want to send spoons to people so that they can feed themselves like that's kind of my love element of spoons is I started carving to make myself a few, but then I was just missing people. So like I sent spoons as like my little connection and love in the distance. So Kate, I, I love that you were speaking about just how we pour ourselves into the forms that we carve because it it is true. They're not just little spoons, you know, they really, we give them to people we care about. We want them to eat and nourish themselves. Like that's a meaningful thing. Um, so I did not get a big one done. I got distracted by other Sloyd projects, um, but I think it's going to be a good exercise for me to try and do it at one time. And I love your idea of starting it, carving it to dry, and then just having it as something you can noodle on every once in a while, like not a committed project, but something to come back to, which I think will work better with my brain um, and way of working. But this is my my example of the simple template. So we've got a little heart up here. And then I added a few extra petals to make it look a little bit more like an aster flower. Um, the painting nice. showed you how inconsistent my chip carving is. <laughs> so that might've been a bad call to do. And then the pierced heart. Um, I'm impressed with your pierced heart, Kate. I had a I had a heck of a time with this one. And then this is out of- Well, wait, I gotta ask a question. Yep. I'll ask you the question and everybody else, when, when we come around to it, you can answer the same question. I'm curious if you did a pierced mm -hmm. carving, a pierced handle, yep. uh, did you carve it through with a knife or did you drill it out I tried. And, and saw it out and then just refine it with a knife? <laughs> Good question. I tried. I was trying um, on a couple nights at Rise Up to, to pierce this one out. I think I left it too Pretty thick. thick. Yeah. Um, I ended up hitting some grain changes in there and mm -hmm. it was just a disaster it was like a little dent of just like split wood so I I did do three holes um I didn't saw them out I just used a Sloyd knife to knock out the, well, connection the hole. yeah okay um and it's still a little rough in there like it definitely didn't get fully smooth and the metal of the heart tilts but it it worked out and it's plums so it's going to be strong enough yeah. Um, 
And then when I was making this one, just looking at the shape of the handle, again, I was running behind on time, so I didn't chip carve or decorate this, but I just love the handle. So I just did a basic painted plum mm. with a plum handle. And I love this plum color from Real Milk Paint anyways. It's kind of my favorite one. So I just enjoy the silhouette of the yeah. handle shape for this small, simple one. So I've got one that has kind of a really pretty ornate look and then the, yeah, the homework yeah. one. <laughs> Very nice. So thank you, Kate. And Kate, I absolutely loved your texting to check in. I thought that was so sweet to bring a modern idea to it. So yeah, thank very you. cool, very inspiring. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, I Taylor. Should, I should say too that um, the bigger, this big one is based on a spoon that David Western had on the front of his History of Love Spoons book. And I just kind of like yanked it off of that. And then, yeah, this one... I just love this. I think I saw like I've seen some antique spoons that had, you know, these this shape and I just really love the shape. I was like, we should use that one, too. So this one is kind of. David, you'll see on my Instagram, David's original ones of this, but yeah, anyway. Kaylin, can I ask you to hold up the the the. The frame spoon and all that again. Uh, hold on one second. I want to spotlight that again. Da, da, da. How do I get back to the gallery and spotlight you? Hold yeah, on. that's so cool. And it has the anchor and the heart. Yeah, it's an anchor and a heart. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I hesitate to say this, but am I the only one who sees that some of these spoons? <laughs> yeah, the anchor is unfortunate looking. We don't. I didn't. I was going to say that on a recording call. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. And but it's not just that. It's like even no. with the concept of the spoon itself, in many cases, yeah. has a very interesting shape. Yeah. And I'm wondering if love spoons. Maybe you, you know there, there's a that humor. A little bit. There's humor in folk art, and that is one of the things. Like if you look back at folk art, they like to they right. like to have humor. I mean, I'm sitting here blushing terribly, having even raised the question, but <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> All right. Let me jump back out to the gallery. Did I'm, I'm just curious, Kate, did, did David say anything about that? Like, did that come up at all? No, it did not come up, but the humor okay. part did come up. Um, okay. There was, there's a tradition of like making joke spoons at, uh, weddings where you know usually they had the couple eating the first meal together with their spoons uh -huh. connected with the chain but then there was this joke too that people would make um make a connected spoons that were impossible to eat from so it's like a, an upside down bowl or like two spoons connected and <laughs> twisted so that they can't eat together from it and you know just yeah the sense of humor is still there so. Awesome. Well, that's like the 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 classic uh, sort of joke spoon. Like you like you you hand somebody, you've got two people, and it's it's like a really long spoon, and you can't eat with it if you try to eat with it yourself. The mm -hmm. other person has to feed you. Right. <laughs> so, all right. Well, with that, let me jump back out here. So, who would like to go next? Who has a spoon, a love spoon that they would like to show and share? All right, Jody. Spotlight. Morning. Good morning. Um, so thanks, Kate, for the template, and also thank you for the madrone wood that um, Dominic and Phil brought up. And I thought it would be a perfect chance to use that for this template. So I ended up getting, I have two pieces that I got out of that one piece of wood and um this was my oh it's gonna be too bright hold on let's see if i can get out of the light this is the one that i finished hold on. sorry it's okay it was it was actually looking re reasonably decent when you held it up close to the camera i know i'm trying once the once the the once it adjusts to the light level 
I'm trying to get, there we go. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, nice. So I had um, a really fun time doing, I've never carved through a spoon before and I've never done co-rosing co on the bowl. So that was some of the, the detail. And then I co-rose some numbers in the bowl, if any of you know what that means. Oh yes, the password. Oh, nice. <laughs> Seven, <laughs> one, 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 that we, Good that catch. Like multiple times, right? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I just, um, you know, love for spoons and love for spoon carving in this whole community, so. Awesome. That's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. So same question for you. Did you drill through or did you purely carve through? Not so that one did, is better or worse. I did carve through these two and then I drilled through for the middle because that was just like. Yeah, too, too tiny. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So how, how did you go about approaching the carve through of a heart? Um, like chip carving, just make a real deep um, Chip outline card. and you just deepening kept it. deepening yeah it. i actually used um the knife that phil had brought um we when we did our spoon swap recently so i had kind of like um a bigger chip carving knife and um just kept going until i got through to the other side so i had some kind of reference point on where the center was interesting very nice Beautiful job, Jody. Yeah, fun. that's beautiful, Jody. Thanks. Awesome. All right, jump back out here to the gallery. Who would like to go next? All right, Nancy. Can you spotlight you. you Got to remember to unmute yourself. Unmute. There, there yep. I am. Okay. Um, Hi everyone. I'm I miss seeing everybody and Kate. I especially miss um, opportunities to carve with you on this because uh, we've exchanged messages and spoons, but not um, not FaceTime. So I did two in cherry. Um, one sort of following the the pattern. Uh, I think you can see it fairly yeah. well. This one has not a lot of crank. And then I did one with a little more crank. And yeah. this one has a, a, a square knot on it. I love it. And the square knot is sort of a symbol for my partner and I. I often thought that if we ever decide to get a couple tattoos, we'd get square knots. Because we're sailors and because it's a square knot is sort of two individual strands that uh, together make a really tight bond, so. Yeah, brilliant. I, I really enjoyed doing that. And, you know, my carving is always kind of rustic because that's the way I do things, but, um, but it was really fun. And, and uh, I, I did use a drill um, uh -huh. to get started and they're very rough hearts with very wonky edges. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard, it's yeah. hard. They kind, of, they kind of work, they kind of work. They're, they're heart-like. Yeah. Heart -like. Um, I love how you have the knot coming over the top and down around the bottom. It's really cool. Yeah, Nancy. yeah it's sort of uh, the little tails wrap around um, yeah. the spoon. I wanted to try and get that dimension, dimensionality in it. And then I, it was almost done and I was looking at it and I thought, oh, it needs something else. And I put these little ridges on the edges. And I really like that because it looks almost like rope. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I thought the purpose was. It's brilliant. It looks wonderful. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I just used a V gouge to, to carve out mostly a V gouge and a little bit of a straight chip carving knife to, to uh, carve the, the, the knot. So I, yeah, it was fun. And I'm carving all the time and following along, uh, especially in Instagram, but not getting much time to get on Rise Up and Carve. So I made a special effort because I, I really want to support the community and we'll try and get on more. So. Yeah, I'm so glad you came, Nancy. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Fantastic job. Wonderful. And I'll All right. I'm going to stay well, on as long as I can, but 
I, I am going to have to get off at some point. No worries. <laughs> Don't we all? Indeed. All right. Excellent job. Who would like to go next? Ian. All right. Let me get you spotlighted. Yeah. <laughs> Long time no see. How you doing, my friend? Yeah, just very busy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's mainly because of me. I'm hardly ever on anymore. So go uh, ahead. Anyway, first one was sort of an electrifying nod to the number nine, which didn't quite turn out right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because I, I love the number nine so much. <laughs> anyway, I do. So I think it's nice cooler. Thing. I think it's cooler than a straight up nine because it looks so much like a keyhole. Yes, it's a key to everything, Kevin. <laughs> number nine. So I took my time with this one because I didn't want to start the other one because it was just so much space to, to decorate. So I actually sat on this one for a couple of weeks and then I thought I better start this one. And I started doing a whole with it drawings but every time I analyzed the drawings I realized that I was getting closer and closer to the side of the spoon and what I didn't want to do was to start carving it and the damn thing would snap so mm. I sort of compromised and uh, I like wow. the idea that the five interconnected hearts these ones were drilled out and then carved out that one was carved out with the knife okay uh, and I just went crazy for a couple of nights and just kept carving. Wow. No real plan apart from the, the five hearts. Uh, so that's amazing. It was actually, good good fun once I got going. I actually enjoyed it, but it was a bit daunting. It's just <laughs> so much space. Yeah. <laughs> but but those little fun. the uh, little sparkles remind me of snowflakes, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just, I did them because I couldn't be bothered doing all this on this side. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love how the hearts are traveling together and like um, yeah. all different angles and stuff. It looks so yeah. nice. I'm not a great, I'm not a great fan of symmetry. I like, I like chaos. So yeah, <laughs> I, I find it hard to do the same pattern over and over again mm -hmm. or, or a mirror off the same pattern. I like to just sort of mix it yeah. up. But no, I, I actually enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, once I got into it, yeah. Uh, so that's sycamore, and this one was cherry. So yeah, but again, I'm not a mad, massive fan of, of Welsh love spoons. Uh, so this was a, a quite a nice exercise, definitely a challenge. Yeah, because these were a pain to cut out. So <laughs> <laughs> they wow. really they are, and I always like, how did those people do it? And they had no electricity. <laughs> <laughs> They had plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's good. A really nice, a nice challenge. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic job, Ian. Wow. Really spectacular. Mm -hmm. All right. Jump back out. Who would like to go next? Who has a love spoon they want to show? All right, John. Can spotlight you. Hey everybody, uh, I just quickly say if you guys haven't watched the demo with David, you you should watch it because it really it, it really he he goes into all the history and it makes it really really interesting. All the different the different like specifically, you were making spoons to impress someone that you you know you wanted to date basically. So mm. um, you there's a lot of, a lot of care and one of the questions I asked him was. If they were so important to um, to to like to get a partner, wouldn't they go find somebody that was really good at it and sort of pay them to make the spoons just so you really impress the parents? So um, he couldn't identify anybody specifically, but um, it's possible, right? Um, so when when she, when Kate threw out love spoon, I was like, love spoons. All right, I'll make a spoon, but. <laughs> I'm going to make mine a little different. So I, I started with, I put horns on it. I'm like, it's not going to look like everybody else's. I'm going to make it different. So, so it started like that. Um, <laughs> so then um, I just so much like Caitlin, Caitlin's um, Viking spoon from the 39 that I kind of tried to 
you know, mirror that energy that she made. So um, these were these are definitely drilled. Um, and then it, I had to really worry about snapping off the yeah uh, the wings. Yeah. Mm. It looks like an alien face to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like a lot of things, but if you look closely, there's eyes right here. Yeah. I'm sorry about my light. It's so crappy. Well, it's but, all right. It actually, it looks pretty good. But yeah, so this was my rendition. Yeah, of Very course. cool. I really like it. And I like the template and I liked all the energy that Kate put into this. It, it turned out to be really fun. So thanks, Kate. Yeah. And Kate, thank you very much for arranging for David to come on and do that. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet myself, but I'm really looking it's forward really to it. It's really good. You really need to watch it. It's really interesting. It's a cool. nice history lesson. All right. Soon, John. Thank you. Yeah, really nicely done. Great job. All right. The other John. Let me uh, get you spotlighted. I'll be John too. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I had a similar reaction at first to the idea of a love spoon. And it's like, well, these are way too ornate. I'm not into this style. This is not mm. what I like doing. So I decided, well, okay, I'll just do my interpretation of it and i got inspired by a couple things that i saw that other people had done and so this is the first one i did as um wow kind of a uh, a love spoon to myself i've kind of thought of myself as being the the egret as uh one of my uh um, um an animals that um signify me and um so this one i carved totally with the knife wow and um, i wanted to try something where i had to carve through and i thought well the two legs of the, of the heron you know would make a, a good one because yeah. i'm not trying to do a design and so i can be a little bit flexible and uh, that's really cool and mm -hmm. as it turned out the um the grain on the um, on the wood kind of mimicked the, um, the feathers of the bird. Yeah. So yeah. So that amazing. this one was for me. So then I really wanted to do one for my wife, um, for me towards my wife, and so I um, um, not not so. Um, um, Anyway, I found out from my wife that with some of the designs that she really liked, I, I was hoping there was an animal that she thought personified her, and I, I, I haven't found that out yet. But she really likes leaves, and so I cut a blank, and I realized after I cut the blank that it was big enough to actually do two spoons, so I took my bandsaw and cut them right down the middle. So if one of them uh, turned out bad, then I would have a second one. So this <laughs> is the first one that I did. And nice. This one, I did drill the holes mm -hmm. and, um, and then sawed um, somewhat on into it to get the holes started and yep. then carved it. And this one came out a little bit more rustic than I wanted, but it still looks really cool. And uh, I was pretty happy with how it turned out, but I wanted to be able to do a little bit finer work. And so then I took the other blank. Nice. And um, did the similar thing, but I was able to get the, uh, the leaves much thinner. Yeah. This one. And uh, I tried to put a little bit of crank in there, but no, nah, I didn't. Quite good. I, figured, I figured on this one, the main thing I wanted to do was uh, try carving these through holes. Yeah. And yeah, it was really hard yeah. <laughs> for me to, to, to do, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. These two, I uh, put um, heat oil and espresso grounds and rubbed it Ooh. in with that and then baked them. And okay. so this, this wood is pretty green. So I was not sure if they were gonna handle the baking 
so well after they were so green, but um, yeah. they no cracks or anything. So nice. And then the other one was just linseed oil, no baking, mm -hmm. no coffee grounds. So wow. And, yeah, I didn't really follow the um, templates at all, but I like the idea of having one that you work on for a mm -hmm. long time. So I think uh, I'm going to um, start working on some that will be a long term um, project. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and you know, I'm getting so much inspiration from what people have done. Um, this is. Uh, well, yeah, just everybody that's done them. It's 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 like it's 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 showing me something that oh, I should try one like that. Oh, I can just take this person's and just try doing that. That's my own template yeah. and learning those um, techniques. And but the creativity of everybody was just really inspiring. So, thank you very much. It awesome. really is inspiring. Those are that's so much work. And now I know how much work it is carving through all those holes. <laughs> Like, so it's so amazing. And I just think it's so great that people are taking this challenge on, even though it's kind of like a learning edge or whatever too. So really cool. Yeah, great job. All right. Jump back out. Who would like to go next? Who's not had a chance to go yet? Anybody else? Patrice is shaking her head. No, no, emphatic no. All right, Larry. Patrice is here for moral support. That's right. <laughs> all right, let me spotlight you, Larry. We're all, all right. waiting for Larry. Let's be honest. Yeah, Larry, Larry's got the number. My first. Wow. And that's just the front. That's cool. Because I use two sides. Wow. With the roots from the tree holding things together. Yeah. With the thistle, the heart. Two hearts on a tree. This is a dogwood blossom. Wow. And the shape of the template incorporated. That's so, very Larry, cool. I think that's my favorite one. I like yeah, it too. Me too. I love it. It's so cool. I love how you, especially where the, the, the ball to the handle transition, how it's curved yes. like that. I love that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the two hearts. Tree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so beautiful. It's a little rough. It's a little crude, but I think that was the, the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. Great job. And then here's the other template that was in the pattern. And again, I do both sides. Very nice. For the most part. And then I veered off and did other things. Character spoons, love spoons, whatever. I did a, a um, fish. fish spoon. Nice. And I've got all the meanings and stuff on my Instagram explanation. Very cool. And then I did a bird, a diving bird, somebody called it. Two hearts and a diamond between. Wow. Yeah, that one's so cool how the hearts are incorporated in the diamonds. Right. Then... I decided I wanted to do, I guess the next one was the, uh, rabbits were incorporating a lot of uh, European art. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a little character spoon. Nice. And I got thinking he was just a little too silly with the, with the teeth. So I redid him and. Very nice. And like that. But then I, I got into some white oak. Mm. I did the infinity nice. knot. Yeah. Holding the heart and the spoon together. It looks so great. What I love is the is the contrast. I can see these hanging 
side by side. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. contrast between the woods. Are y'all mm -hmm. here for a while? And then I uh, getting ready to do a fly fishing expo. So I thought, well, I'll do something with nice. Portray some sea life. Yep. Yeah. They're very cool. So I incised some of the legs instead of chip carved the legs instead yep. of making a relief like yep. I did the rest of it. And of course the heart and the cutouts. And my cutouts were drilled and used to fret saw. Yeah. And then the last piece that I did was this little guy. The octopus. That's so cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Really thin carving. Yeah. 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 I love how those legs are just moving all over the place. Right. And I thought, well, I can come back in and co rolls the suckers or the whatever you call them yeah. on the tentacles. Mm -hmm. But I just I haven't got that part yet. And that's Very it. Cool. That's all? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't do a little more? Come on. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Great job. I have to say, if you haven't read Larry's descriptions on his Instagram posts, you should because he put a lot of thought into them and he yes. really put um, a lot of meaning into his spoons and wow. he lays it out um, on his descriptions really well. So um, I would encourage people to read those too. Awesome. All right. Yeah, Fantastic your work job. Been very inspiring. Your posts have been really fun to read through. So yeah. thank you, thank you. All for all mm -hmm. the preparing all that. Yeah. Yeah. Super inspiring. All right. Yeah. Is anybody else ha who has not yet had a chance to share anything have, have a spoon to share? If not, then I think we're through everything. My Instagram is in fact opening up, but it's not doesn't seem to be opening all of the images. Like the it just sits down there and churns at the bottom. So I've got some on here that I can share my screen and show. Um, I think Instagram had an issue with using the hashtag again. Oh really? Yeah, because some of mine didn't want to, and I had to repost them. Yeah, yeah I mean, I it, says it, it says that Ron there's 35. Sorry, Ron made one that didn't show up in the hashtag, and it was uh, his hate spoon. His oh, sport. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> that was that was hilarious. Yeah, it yeah, says so that there's 35 posts to the hashtag, but I only see like nine. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Craig Ramsey had uh, also has one in progress that didn't show up on the hashtag. I think is this thistle. Oh wow! Yeah, he's still working on it, but um, yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think. In fact, I'm I'm kind of debating. I mean, I suppose I can, like I said, I can go through and I can try and share the ones that I can see. Uh, yeah, last, Chuck, last time what we did is when I was presenting, I went through the ones that I could see and then people just called out other accounts to search really quickly if we knew that they had carved a spoon and that was okay. But yeah, okay. Instagram's definitely got a hashtag issue. It's very frustrating. Yeah. There right. haven't been, I think there were less missed on this one than um, the last one because there weren't as many carved, but then I've been trying to keep an eye out and stuff and um, people are tagging me, but so then I can catch them too. But um, like I know Ron's and Craig's didn't show up, and they both said they were okay with like just showing. Ron said he couldn't make it, so he was like showing. Yeah. All right. Well, here I'll go ahead and share, and I'll show. I'll go through the ones that I can go through anyway. So this first one is is Larry's. Um, Very nice. I love that you did the front and the back. That's so cool. So is that a handheld fret saw? Yes. 
Very nice. All right. Now the next one is the heron or the egret. Yeah, that's the before the decoration part. Yeah. I thought it was just so cool how the grain Sorry. the wings, feathers. It was right. Like, yeah. Yeah, the flow of the grain absolutely works beautifully with that. I wish I could say I had planned that, but <laughs> it, it just happened. <laughs> right? Happy accidents. We like those. <laughs> Jody, that is just spectacular. I love how you did the call rosing in there with the, the password. Love it. Absolutely. I, know, I was thinking about trying to carve one with the 40 or something or I don't know the rise up symbol, but I didn't get to it yet. <laughs> I'm glad you could did that one, Jody. Jody, your chips are also perfect on that flower. Like I know, right? I'm very impressed. I had a I had a really hard time with my flower chips. <laughs> Those are gorgeous. I've 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 not done it enough to get good at it, but I've, it was really fun. It's not as maybe in person, it's not quite as neat looking, but I was happy with it. It, it was fun to do. Well, that's the thing that impresses me so much about Ian's at chip carving and, and Sean, you know, uh, it's just, it's so precise, so good. Yeah, those were the D David spoons that he carved uh, long, you know, a while back. And that was the spoon I based the template on. Yeah. Spoons, yeah. He looks like he could benefit from sh showing up on Rise Up and Carve a little bit. He might get a little better. <laughs> As a joke, David, in case you ever listen to this. <laughs> really, really amazing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I like what you did with it. I really do, Larry. This is uh, our. Wait, is this John? John. Oh, John. Sorry. Yeah, the simple lines. It's really yeah. effective. Yeah, that works great. Mm -hmm. And the baking brings out some of that depth too. Yeah, absolutely. No, that was brilliant. The baking really, really makes it, I think, makes it pop. Mm -hmm. And some of the uh, espresso grounds kind of naturally got into that. Oh, and this is a scoop that I <clears throat> had nothing to do with the ch challenge, but I I know, but I like the otter. <laughs> yeah, so I definitely think I'm going to do some more otters. Yeah. We've got good friends that her, her, Handle uh, uses the word otter in it. She, they love otters. Very cool. It's the wabbit. <laughs> Kill the wabbit. Very nice. It's a walnut wabbit. Nice. And then the non-toothy rabbit. <laughs> you need to add a carrot to the toothy rabbit. And I, like what the how you, I like how you called it a country hill cousin, Larry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Very nice. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Kate. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, great Just, job on the, the knot. Yeah, it looks uh, like a rope. Yeah. Oops. There's the collection, very nice. 
Yeah, I do love that contrast between the dark wood and the light wood too. Mm. Yeah, I really love how, how Larry um, describes what's going on and what he said about the crawfish uh, species uh, being indicators for uh, water conditions. And it's really neat to hear uh, details like that in Larry's stuff mm. and the Na Native American connection. Yeah, I didn't know you were a stream team volunteer too, Larry. That's really cool. Thank you. Beautiful yeah. job, Nancy. Yeah, those are great. So cool. Yeah. Chip carving is just amazing. I mean, so fine. Yeah, I and mean, it's so dynamic. I think, like, right? Yeah, so much movement. It's so great. Really, really cool. The octopus. I'd like to be under the sea. Just looks so funny how it's like holding on to the spoon. You can see in the back, really, it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. You can either get barefooted or put your shoes on and take the boys out to poop and pee pee, please. That's awesome. I think you did yeah. great, John. I think that um, the crow iconography in the Viking stuff is so cool and I love it. The feathers are excellent. Yeah, I'm just so impressed that you didn't get, you didn't snap off those wings. It's like yeah. so you... delicate. <laughs> yeah, I was constantly, constantly nervous that I would snap one of those off. It looks so good though. Especially as it started to dry out like, Careful, careful. Wow, look at that. Really nice. What wood is that, John? That, 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 the 39, the template 39, right? Both. You're muted. John, do you remember I'm, where? You're mute. Sorry, the, four, the 40 is walnut. Um, Trying to think of what the 39 was. Poplar. Spalded poplar. Nice. That looks right. spectacular. Show the back of that again. That's how cool that the grain of that walnut was. Like, and and then I had to carve over that, like try to keep it symmetrical. That was really hard. Oh yeah. Um yeah, that's and yeah, that was from Patrice. I, I keep forgetting to give her credit. I think that was a piece she sent me actually. The walnut or the poplar? Uh, both. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there. Grain. Yeah, wow, look at that. Isn't that cool from the back? I'm a little wow. proud they're not horns anymore, but you did an amazing <laughs> job. <laughs> the feathers. It looks great. Yeah. Beautiful. And I'm sad that I missed out on seeing the progress of that. I was hoping, Patrice, you would at least do a a, a pencil design of a um, skull uh, love spoon. Okay, it's coming, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> I think we are out of the hashtag somehow. Rachel yeah. does have one, but. Um... She said, I think, was hers not done? Hers isn't finished, right? And it, she posted a finished photo today. I don't think she has. Oh, I didn't see it. I haven't gone on yet. But she's working on it. 
I can look it up, Rachel. I think that's it. That's the last of what I have on here. So you said Rachel has one that she posted? Oh, yeah, here. You could click on yeah, that. Yeah, she post posted it. Oh. Wow, look at that. Wowzers. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so funny that, you know, like it, me included, just everyone's like, I don't really want to carve love spoon, but I just think it's really cool that, you know, we have tried <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> and that's what I think is great about the challenge. The inter intertwined uh, hearts on that, I think is yeah really, really amazing. Really, really cool. I've always loved Celtic knotwork. So uh, anything that follows that sort of design work or Viking night not work any not work like that it's really really neat stuff yeah she did a really good job she really did really impressive it is I love how it's just framed in there indeed so um I have not yet posted an Instagram post about it but if we go to rise up and carve home the new template is up and this one is by andrea cool. so the, the new template is out there and our show and tell will be september 3rd saturday 9 a.m eastern i will be away at camp Hopefully I will have internet access though. So should be there, but this one's out there for folks to give it a shot. I think it's a really cool design. Um, so thank you so much, Kate, for- oh, Can I show more... a couple more that- Oh yeah, 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 you've got more, absolutely. Do you want to share screen? Can... No, no, I'll just hold my phone up. It's oh, great. okay, all right, hold on. Let me stop sharing then. So Sunny had his- this is Sunny's. Oh, nice. And then, um, let's see, we had, John had this one, the first one. Um, nice. JC Woodcraft. And then, um, uh, he made also this one. Can't really there see it. Is. And there that was- That one has a thistle on the top of it as well. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, I love the thistle. Um, Scott, I think, I thought Scott, oh yeah, here it is. Scott, I don't know if he's, if you're here, Scott, but you're, I think this is you, right? Um, he did that one. Beautiful. And I was honored because it's his first Instagram post. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's, cool. uh, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the, the ones that <clears throat> I noticed. Anyway, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kate, as always, uh, for your wonderful uh, participation in um, support of RUAC and thank you for your template and thank you for hosting and setting up the discussion with David. I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Yeah. And uh, with that, uh, like I said, our RUAC Spoon Challenge 41 is posted. Oh, and for any who saw my call for templates, we, we had quite an amazing response. We had a great uh, response to that. So we've got uh, possible templates lined up carrying us all the way, I think, out through May uh so of next year so we've got lots in the pipeline um coming up i believe after andrea is going to be an emmet template so uh, emmet has agreed to uh, let us use share one of his uh templates uh so i think we're going for the ice cream scoop so uh, should should be fun i'm hope i'm trying to convince him if he'll see if he'll do a demo for us of how he goes about carving that so yeah. 
keep keep your eyes tuned. But before that, we've got Andrea's template. Uh, so everybody go out there, have a lot of fun with it, do some cool stuff, and we'll see you the next time. Oh, with wow. that, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks.